So we've been on the road for a couple of weeks in our camper van now, experiencing what it's like to drive here in Australia, and we thought it would be a great idea to talk to a professional about what we're doing right and wrong and questions that we've come up with over the last couple of weeks. So we're here in Cleveland, Queensland, in Australia with David Barnes, who is the owner and expert of David Barnes Driving School. Thanks so much for being here with us, David. We really appreciate you taking time to talk to us. No worries. First off, how long have you been teaching driving? Uh, it's 14 years now. Mm -hmm. um, started back in 2002. I've done uh, some truck training, um, but found that uh, I enjoyed teaching the, um, the car driving much better. Now, one of the big things that, of course, everybody from other parts of the world thinks about when they come here is I have to drive on the left side of the road and sit on the right side. Now, I won't ask you really too much about that because we know that's not your specialty and we've actually done surprisingly well at it. I was telling you earlier how proud I was of myself that I parallel parked on the left side of the street my very first try. <laughs> so, the biggest thing we've come across that is not so common in North America, although it exists, are roundabouts. The thing we've noticed is that signals are, we were told this anyway, that signals are supposed to be used in the roundabout, which is not something we had ever heard of before. Yeah, the approach tends to be that once you've got your license, it's up to you to keep up to date with the road rules. Okay. Unfortunately, because we only get tested once, um, people don't bother keeping up to date. So what we've got is a bit of a mix of people indicating right when they're going straight ahead. We've got all, uh, people not indicating at all, it, it's just a crazy mix. So the tech, the, what's, what's really the, supposed what's to happen, right to do, if you're yes. going straight ahead, um, think of the roundabout as a separate road, okay. okay? You've entered that road and then you want to show your intention to turn off that road. So you turn your left hand indicator on to go straight ahead. So in other words, when you're entering the roundabout to go straight across it, you don't use a signal at all. Not when but, entering it. But when right. you are now to the point where you're going to exit the roundabout, you signal left to exit off the roundabout. Yeah. As, you, as you go past the last street before the one you want, that's when you put your left hand in the car. Ah, we got that wrong. So <laughs> someone, someone told us that if you're going straight across the roundabout, you don't signal at all. No. But that's not correct. Think of it as a separate road and you are turning left off that road. Okay, so that's yeah. good. That's what I wanted to know from an authority. <laughs> now, what about if you're going onto the roundabout and you're making the very first turn off it, the first exit, as a left turn, how would you signal that on the approach and exit from the roundabout? It's like a normal left-hand turn. Just put your left-hand indicator on. As you're approaching, keep the indicator on and just turn left. Great. As if there were no roundabout, as if it were a regular <laughs> intersection. Yeah. And now the trickiest one of all the one we have been most unsure of. When you are coming to a roundabout and taking the third exit, which would in effect be yep. a right turn, yep. what's the correct signaling procedure for that? Right hand indicator as you're approaching the roundabout, Okay. and then you're on the separate road of the roundabout, yep. and as you go past the last street before the one you want, flick your left hand indicator on. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. So, in other words, as you approach the roundabout, you, you can see it as a cross street where you're going to be going to the right, you're just going to have to go around to get to the right, so that's why you signal a right turn as you enter? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have a related question about uh, who has right of way. Now, we've come to a lot of intersections that have what in North America look like yield signs. They're red and white triangles and they say give way. Give way, yeah. And the interesting thing we've noticed is that there are some local residential neighborhoods where we've seen what appear to be regular cross streets. Yeah with a dashed stop line. Some of those have stop signs and some of them have give way signs. Is it correct to assume that the give way sign just means you're allowed to kind of do a rolling stop? Is that the only difference? Yeah, it's a rolling stop. Okay. Yeah. So we tend to have our signs a little bit back to front, it seems to me, in okay. that um, there's give way signs where there should be stop signs and stop signs where there should be give way signs. But either way, if you can't see, um, and it's a give way sign, slow right down, use your low gear, first gear, and just creep forwards until you're out at a place where you can see before right. you go forwards. Basically yeah. treat it like a stop sign if you feel you need to because you can't see. It's not a stop sign. I yeah. can't, I'm a driver trainer, I can't <laughs> say to treat it as a you're stop sign. not allowed sign. to say that. <laughs> it's off the record, off the record. A rolling stop is not a stop. <laughs> so is a 
So really, a give way sign is basically the equivalent of a yield sign. It's just that we've seen them used in places here in Australia where we normally wouldn't see them in North America. And I was also wondering, is there a difference between having a dashed line and a solid line on the street there? Does one of those go with a stop sign and one go with a give way sign? Yeah, the solid line is the stop sign. Okay. And the dotted line is the give way. Great, so they go together. Yeah. Then there's also the edge of the lane. So if, if you're at the intersection, the lane coming from your right um, right. across the intersection will often have a dotted line, but it's usually a thinner and longer line. So the, ah. the one for the give way sign is shorter and fatter. Okay. And the one for the edge of the lane is usually thinner and longer. So as you come to those intersections, you'll see a fat dashed line closer to you, which is to hold you back. Yeah. And the line, the thinner dashed line beyond that is the edge of the lane from the car that's now going to come from your right. From the right, yeah. Okay. So it means that um, if it was a giveaway line, you can just slow right down and just creep forwards up into that that uh, edge of lane line okay. and stop again if you need to or keep going. If it's a stop sign, we stop for three, two to three seconds Okay. Um, and then we can creep forwards. Do people actually stop or do they roll through stop signs a lot here too? Oh, the rolling stop is common. Even in a stop sign? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we see that a lot. Although we have noticed, and maybe this isn't universal, but where we come from, uh, if the speed limit is 65 miles an hour, the standard thing pretty much is for everyone to go 75 miles an hour. Uh, yeah. And we have not seen that here so much. It appears that people actually obey the speed limit a lot here. Yeah. Um, a couple of years ago, Queensland brought in the no, no tolerance um, and specifying that the speed limit is the limit. And um, no tolerance means no tolerance. If you go one kilometer over the really? speed limit, you can get booked. We, um, we went through a radar, actually a laser trap this morning coming here on the highway and we were going exactly 99 kilometers per hour in a 100 kilometer zone and I had the cruise control set because you warned us. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, the speedometers in vehicles aren't generally accurate. Right. You know, there can be a 10% error in your speedometer. Uh, the best way uh, is to check that is to get a GPS, borrow your friend's GPS and go for a drive and learn where your speedometer matches the GPS. Because the GPS is going to be more accurate. It's, it's treated as the standard. Yeah. yeah. Now there's one other place that I, we're pretty sure we know the answer to this one, but I just wanted to confirm. In, uh, in North America, right turn on a red light is legal in most or all states at this point, unless a sign specifically says not to. Do I understand right here that it's the opposite, that it is illegal to make a left turn on red unless the sign specifically says that you can? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. It's it's only a new thing that's come in maybe two years. It came in as a trial. They're now introducing it into more uh, intersections in the Brisbane area. Um, in this uh, Redland City area, we haven't got any turn on left signs as yet. There are certain intersections we've come to where the left turn has kind of its own separate lane away. This is a traffic light. And when you come up to the traffic light, the left turn has its own little separate kind of offshoot yep. where the traffic light might be in to your right in like a triangle between the lane that's going straight and the lane that's turning left. Yep. Are, are those no different than if that wasn't there? You can only turn left? If the sign says you can, uh, no. In those situations, there's a traffic. So there's the traffic light. Yep. Then there's little traffic island. Yes. And the road goes around underneath that traffic island. Well, I'm you can not underneath, but to the well, left. To the left of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. Um, you can just turn left any time. Oh, great. Yeah. We, we were we weren't sure, and there were a couple of times when I was waiting to either be honked at or get a ticket if I went. Yeah. No, just turn left any time. Now there's a. Um, uh, something not related to driving so much as parking. We were in uh, a town recently that had what seemed to be somewhat odd parking signs, maybe we're making too much of it, but they said there were parking spaces that were marked as 1P and then spaces right next to it that were marked as 1 half P. Yep. And there were other spaces right nearby that were marked 2P. Yep. Is that the amount of time you're allowed to park? Yeah, one hour, okay. half hour, 
uh, 15 minutes sometimes and two hours or four hours whatever it says okay we yeah. weren't sure what p stood for maybe it's p just p is for parking so ah. so the number is for the the time and the p is for parking so you can park for as simple as that yeah we weren't sure we're like does p mean like h like hours <laughs> perfect or, or was it a permit or or was it a permit parking right in North America, school buses are mostly exactly the same, which means they're painted yellow and they have two sets of lights at the top. The yellow lights flash back and forth to let you know the bus is going to stop. The red lights then flash to let you know the bus is stopped and it's a serious offense to pass a stopped school bus. And we've seen that school buses here don't follow that kind of uniformity and don't have signs on them. What are the rules related to cars when school buses are stopped picking up or dropping off children? If the orange lights, some of the buses have orange lights flashing at the back of the bus. Okay. Um, in that case, we just proceed with caution. Oh, big. That's that's all it is. So there's no stopping for school buses. No stopping for school buses. It's one of the most universal things in North America that any time lights are flashing on the school bus, all traffic in all directions must stop. Yeah. That's uh, not the case here. No, not at all. Your, no. your kids are more self-sufficient. <laughs> I think that's what it is. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> But when you're driving past one and it's picking up children, you simply need to be careful but not stop. Just proceed with caution. Yeah, there's, cool. there's, there's kids and people in that general area, so you're, just, you're supposed to... When there's a flashing orange light, you're supposed to slow down. Quite often, though, we don't even know it's a school bus. The bus we we noticed that. The, the bus just pulls in and we just shoot past. We noticed that, that the school buses are not clearly discernible from other buses. Yeah, they're just normal buses. Interesting. Yeah. We were on our way here and we paid our first toll, we think. We went through an area that said that there were tolls, and we knew here in Brisbane, in the Brisbane area, that there are tolls to be paid. Yeah, over, on the, on the, over the Gateway Bridge. Yes, and yeah. we went over, we assumed they got our license plate number, yeah. and we went online and filled out the form, and we hoped that we paid the toll. Yeah, best thing, uh, give them a ring on Tuesday. Just call and make sure. Just call and make sure. Okay. Yeah, that's the best thing. If you're upfront and honest about it and you make the initial contact, it, it shouldn't be a problem. I can't speak on their behalf. It shouldn't be a problem. Um, I've got one of those tags, which is bips when I go across. David, we want to thank you so much for spending the time to talk to us and reinforce some of the things that we thought we knew and correct us on a couple of things that we weren't sure of. We've been doing a pretty good job, I think, of driving here. I haven't gone off the road, haven't driven on the wrong side accidentally, haven't gotten honked at, no accidents, and I even managed to parallel park. So hopefully uh, we're doing okay, and we really appreciate your having us here and having your input. No worries. <laughs> Thanks so much. It's been good meeting you. Yeah, you too. Yeah. Specially designed and used for remote desert travel, it's equipped with tons of clever features, including an ingenious system for keeping dust out of the toad which Doug is going to show us. And that connects with a sewer connection to the front of the tub. And you're saying he blows air through that so it pressurizes the car? The, the amount of air going into the, um, the air intake just pressurizes the car so that there's pressure coming in.